I'm just going to talk a little bit about the purpose and goals of CERC, the history, school projections for this upcoming year, general areas of support that we offer, our new campus administrative mentoring program, some important dates for your calendar, and then give you a little bit of contact information in case you have any additional questions. So the main purpose of CERC is to provide schools with information and resources and some technical assistance regarding the school improvement process. I believe that in the last couple of days you've gone through some of the requirements for each of the stages, specifically stage one, and one of the things that our office does is try to help you a little bit with that um, navigation, that new system. The goals of CERC are develop a, developing a relationship that increases leadership capacity. Once again, we're not a monitoring agency. Uh, working with CERC for the last four years, I do tend to see the uh, stages of AYP grief. When we first start talking to people, often they consider us as the messenger and they really do want to shoot us. Um, soon those uh, arms that are folded at those first meetings come down a little bit and they realize maybe these people aren't so bad, maybe they will answer our questions and help us through this. And then by the end of the year, about this time of year, we're excited to be partners with you and you're seeing the successes and you're seeing the progress that you've made. So um, we, we really are into that relationship piece. We also help you navigate the requirements of No Child Left Behind. We do try and get to your campus and talk to you a little bit about what your plans are. We try and be a face on your campus rather than be sitting in a bureaucratic office. We do um, work with you to design those plans. We're not coming in and pretending we're the expert. We, are very, um, we acknowledge the fact that you are the leader on that campus or you are the leader in the district, that you know that school and that campus better than anybody else. But what we can bring to the table are the experiences that we're seeing schools across the state go through and what they're finding successful in meeting the needs of children. So those are some of the things that we bring to the table, taking into account your expertise and your knowledge as well. A little bit of history about CERC. We began four years ago with 30 schools. We've grown over the years. We now are working with about 180 schools with the potential number for next year being 650. So our family is growing. We designed the program based on a few other states across the uh, country that had begun this process a little bit before we had. And one of the things that we noticed is that they all had an outside set of eyes, critical friend, external facilitator. And so we took those models from Kentucky and Georgia and California, and we adapted them to something that we thought would work in Texas. And that would be the technical assistance provider that we began about four years ago. The technical assistance provider were experienced educators that went through an application process. They usually had to have at least some principal experience, if not superintendent experience. And then they also had to have had some experience with school improvement. We um, have a lot of consultants. We have a lot of retired educators. And they work in that TAP role, or technical assistance provider role. The one thing that we do make sure is that they stay up to um, date on accountability requirements. Because obviously, if you're a retired educator and you've never been under a system with AYP and TEKS and TAX, that they need to stay up to date so they can be of the most assistance to the schools in the program. This upcoming year, and I'll talk about it in more detail in a few more slides, we're initiating or beginning the CAMP program, the Campus Administrative Mentor Program. Schools in stage two and above will still receive a technical assistance provider who has a school-wide focus. Whereas schools that are coming into stage one will be working with an administrative mentor. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in a, in a few slides. Let me tell you about school projections. Um, this is a very unofficial list. We went to the TEA website and downloaded the uh, accountability scores, for AYP scores for all of the t Title I campuses. And we went through and we tried to project how many schools could potentially be coming into our program for the upcoming year. If you are an ESC um, representative here, we do have this information in our office that we can share with you, but I wanted to leave this up there for a few moments so that you could um, look at your region and see how many schools could be coming into the program. Like I said, this year we've been working with about 200 schools, but there's the possibility that total we could be working with 600 in the future. 
Some of the general areas of support before I get into the camp program. I just mentioned that these four, the three people you met and myself are a point of contact. We are somebody that you can call if you have questions about the SIP application. That's the money that comes along with this program, the important bits. You can call us and we'll put you in touch with the correct person at TEA that can help you with application questions. We're there to help you discuss how you're going to present your stage one status to your parents. We're there to help you with any questions the district may have of you. We're there to talk about the technical assistance providers or the CAMs. We really do strive to be there to answer your questions. And if we can't answer them, which, you know, we're not perfect, sometimes we can't, we try and find the person that can answer those questions. Another role that we often play is just kind of being a sounding board that you can run some things by. A lot of times, you know, I, I refer to the stages of AYP grief. A gut reaction can often be to play the blame game. And unfortunately, when you're looking at data, it's very easy to slip into that, oh, we would have met AYP if it wasn't for two special education students. And what we try and do in our office is make you realize that when you're presenting that information to parents, that saying we would have made if it wasn't for two special education students probably isn't going to help build a relationship and support system with your parents and your community that sometimes when you're looking at numbers, that can be the way you think looking at numbers. But if you can just rephrase that and say, we need to focus on how we can better meet the instructional needs of our students in certain areas, including special education, you're going to get that support of parents. You're going to get them supporting you when you send those letters out that you have to send at the beginning of the year. So it's just a small little things like that, that from our experiences working with campuses, we can kind of give you some hints on ways to address um, parents, communities, and, and phrases that we've found in the past have been really um, caused some concern and, and got some people upset. I know that there were some questions that came up yesterday about the CERC introductory meetings. These are meetings where we're going to go out into the field. We have five of them set up in different regions across Texas, and I'll show you the dates at the end of the presentation, where we spend two days with you. And we go over a lot of this information, but in more detail. The actual requirements of stage one. What are the no child left behind requirements? What are the requirements of the CAM program? What are the requirements of CERC and TEA? Um, it's a two-day training. The first day is for schools that are entering the program, that have, have not been in school improvement for the previous years. So for those stage one, people that are coming into stage one, into stage one status, that first day, we go over those requirements. We tell you a little bit about CAM. You'll be meeting your mentors, and I'll talk about that in a little bit more. Um, and you'll also be discussing some of the um, other requirements, such as campus improvement planning, and again, referring to those letters of uh, choice, transportation, all those requirements of no child left behind. Anita's going to be with us um, during those presentations, telling you a little bit more about things that have come down from USDE and any updates at uh, TEA. On day two, we provide more practical um, areas and strategies for you to take back to your campuses. Day two, we have what we are starting to call our reunion schools. Schools that have been in the program are going to be with us for another year. They come in on day two, and we have presentations on accountability and AYP. Don't get too excited. We'll save you a seat. And um, we're also having people on CIP presentations and also some of the principals and technical assistance providers that have been through this and can share their experiences of the school improvement program. Another thing that we can share with you are calendars and timelines. We try and send out emails. And we have a listserv where we just kind of give you a heads up. If TEA is requiring some information, if USDE is requiring any information, if our office is requiring information, we just kind of send you a double reminder there in case you didn't get the first set of information from TEA. Another requirement that we offer and a resource that we offer is the Texas School Improvement Conference. Some of you that have worked with us in the past know that we used to do best practice conferences. This year we've extended this to be a one large conference in Austin, Texas, and Michael, who uh, waved at you earlier, he's heading up this uh, initiative. We have schools that have been through Title I Improvement present. We have national speakers come in and talk about curriculum issues. We have other schools across Texas, whether they be distinguished schools or whether they be schools that are having success in a certain area, they come in and talk. 
It's a place where we invite ESC reps to um, come and talk sometimes. So it's just, again, another networking session where we try and share some resources. Three times a year, we put out a newsletter. Again, it's an opportunity just to kind of touch base with you, show you that we're still there, that we still care, and uh, give you any updates. Our principal planning guides. These are areas that we see our schools requiring or asking for specific assistance on. So we bring in teams of experts from around the state, and we put them in a focus group, and we ask them to give us input on what they think are strategies that would be most beneficial to principals and schools. We put out six last year, and I think we plan to put out six to nine in this upcoming year. We do provide those free to those schools that are in the program. We send them to principals. We send them to district personnel, superintendents, ESCs, TAPs, CAMs, and, um, and then offer them for districts if they want to purchase more. Other professional development opportunities, we are working on building a program for districts that go into improvement that extends on the program that we currently offer, which is helping with CIP planning. We've also last year introduced a um, culture module from uh, SREB that went down really well with our stage two schools. We offered that free of charge too, and we'll probably be doing that in the future. For all of this information and a little bit more in-depth information, you can always visit our website, and um, I've put that up there for you, which has all of this information, a lot of the forms and a lot of the guidelines. These principal planning guides, too, that I just alluded to, they um, are available, downloadable on the website. So you, if you don't want the fancy, glossy copy, you can um, download from the website and just get the plain black and white version. As we started to talk to principals that have been through the program, they started to tell us that instead of a school-wide focus that first year, they really wanted a sounding board that would work one-on-one -on -one with them as the administrator. And using those, that input from principals, using input from districts that have been in the program, and using a lot of the um, expertise of our current TAPs and uh, sounding boards, they came up with the administrative mentoring model, which we believe that coaching model that has been referred to, I know, in the last few presentations that you've sat through, are really vital components to any leadership development program. Just as I was saying earlier, you're the expert on your campus. You know the ins and outs of your kids, of your teachers. You know the day-to-day -day excitement of being a principal as well as the problems of being a principal. And we wanted to tap into that and build that rather than just come in and do, automatically do a school-wide focus. The goals of this program is to, to, number one, foster that supportive relationship and guide the principal in um, problem solving. We went through our mentor training last week and one of the uh, mentors that was in that program stood up and said, my goal of being a mentor is to discover the brilliance within each principal I work with. And I think that's what we're trying to do. We're not trying to teach you to be a better principal. We're not saying that our mentors know more than you as a principal. What we're saying that the, is that the principal job can often be an isolated role that sometimes you don't have someone to run things by. You don't have somebody to say, what sort of tone should I take in this faculty meeting? How can I express to my staff the urgency of AYP? Here's some ideas I have for addressing this, this department chair about this issue. And just having somebody there as a sounding board, and that is what we hope this role of this mentor will do for you. Let me tell you a little bit about how the mentor, mentors got selected. They had to complete a written application and show they had experience in school improvement, that they had administrative experience, and specifically that they knew about AYP. We then went and scored that application using a rubric and invited the top scorers to be interviewed across the state. From those interviews, we selected 37, I believe, mentors. They're regionally assigned. If you remember the chart I showed a few slides back, we tried to make sure that we matched the right number of CAMs with the region um, where they would be working. So that's why we have up there regional assignment. The roles and responsibilities of the CAM, I've kind of gone over. It's there for your sounding board. They are uh, working for you, with you, and um, they're hoping just to help you get out of AYP. Their goal is the same as your goal. They will be funded through our office. We'll be paying those CAMs $2,500. That will not be part 
of the 25,000, the amount that you'll be getting from TEA, this will be a separate amount of money. And we're asking that those mentors dedicate at least uh, five days, not all at once, but in our increments to your campus and to your needs. These mentors are going to be focusing on 15 effective traits. I'll talk a little bit more about the actual timeline of how they're going to work with you in a second. But the foundational piece of this mentoring program are effective traits. We pulled research from Mazzano, from Lambert, from the principles that we've worked with when we've done best practice conferences. And we kind of charted them all and looked for some traits that went across all of this research. And we came up with 15 areas. And I'm just putting these up here for you right now, just so you kind of have a preview of what these traits are going to be. The mentor is going to work with you in um, choosing three of these traits that you can choose after doing a self-assessment that you as principals want to work on. And then you'll work with that mentor on putting together a plan of action, setting some goals in how you're going to improve in this area or improve your staff in this area. It's going to be your focus, what you want to work on. So I put these five up, giving you a chance to look at these five, the curriculum, communicating a clear vi vision, time management, you'll be amazed, I'm sure you won't be amazed at how many times that comes up when we talk to principals, um, developing effective professional development, and knowledge of effective instruction. Monitoring um, systems also comes up a lot. When I've been on campuses visiting, that's one area where principals love coming up with ideas, love planning how to solve a problem, have get great energy in putting that team together to put this, a, a plan in place. But then they often admit that when it comes to monitoring and evaluation, there's a disconnect and that it's almost like you get excited about something and then when it's launched, you don't want to have to go back and monitor and evaluate. So that's something that's come up with the principles we work with. Looking at data, collaboration, again, communication skills, and establishing that high-performing learning culture. Uh, communication skills, we find a lot of times that the principal is very clear on their vision and their desire for um, school improvement, but often they haven't made the step of communicating that to their prof uh, professionals on their campus. Or they have communicated, they just haven't gone back and monitored and evaluated to see whether that message was, uh, was heard by their staff. Identifying effective resources and staff, building leaders on the campus. Again, kind of going back to what I was talking about earlier, enhancing that community involvement, not alienating parents. Understanding accountability requirements, obviously, as this is a federal USDE AYP program, and developing an effective school-wide plan. These are going to be 15 traits that you're going to look at and decide what is principles you want to work on. For any mentoring relationship to work, there has to be a relationship built between the principal and the mentor. So we are going to request that the principal does take on some responsibilities themselves. If, um, you know, when you take Title I funding or SIP funding, when you take Title I SIP funding, one of the requirements is that you agree to be part of this camp program. And we're going to try and make it as pleasant as an experience as possible. Again, we're there to help you, not to monitor you, but we do need you to play a part in this relationship too. So one of the things that we're going to ask our principals to do is to agree to participate fully in the mentoring relationship. And not, this isn't something that can be passed on or delegated to an assistant principal. This really is you as leaders of the campus. You as having the opportunity to take your campus to the level it needs to be at, to where you want it to be, that you take that responsibility and you agree to participate. Mentioning again, selecting those effective traits, monitoring the progress of your personal and school-wide goals, and then that communication with your mentor throughout the year. The time commitment that we're looking at here, during that introductory meeting, we have set aside about two hours on that first day during the intro meeting where you will meet with your mentor. That will be your first opportunity as a principal to meet with your mentor. I promise you they're very nice people. They don't bite. Um, we'll make sure they don't bite. They um, have an activity to work with you on both building your relationship, that initial point-to-point -point contact, 
also talking a little bit about AYP and some information that you may want to take home from that first intro meeting, but mainly just setting up contact information and some meeting times where that mentor can come onto your campus. We've designed the program so that the mentor spends about three to four hours with you on campus for the first time they come to visit. So we are asking you to dedicate that time to that mentor. Following that, we envision this relationship being a combination of email contact, phone contact, some visits. We realize how busy you are as principals, so we're not expecting you to block aside full days to spend with the mentor, just that if you, between the two of you, agree to some time to have a face-to-face -face meeting, that you are available during that time. Okay. The outline of that first face-to-face -face meeting we will um, send out to you in a letter that we'll send as soon as we know exactly which schools we're going to be working with. Some of the things that we're looking at for that first face-to-face -face meeting is to go over the principal self-assessment that we'll be giving to you um, to complete, to look at your data and make sure that your self-fulfillment goals match the needs of your school, to talk, look at that data and see how your principal goals will meet the needs of your school. All these discussions are going to go on during that face-to-face -face meeting. Um, the mentor is very much wanting to keep the integrity of the relationship between you and them, but I'm sure that they wouldn't mind having a tour of your school where you can point out the things that are successful on your campus and maybe kind of point out some of the areas that you yourself are wanting to work on during this upcoming year. This is my contact information where you can reach me. Um, as I said, each of the CERC team does take responsibility for different regions. You can find that information on our website too, but if you wanted to use me as a point of contact, I can forward your information onto the person at our office that works with your region. Um, we're all here to be a resource for you, as I keep saying, and I think um, it's very easy to fall into the difficulties of being a principal in this day and age and the, how hard that job is and the struggles and and kind of take a little bit of a, a downer attitude to being a principal and how hard it is. But I really hope that through this relationship we can start celebrating some of the joys of being a principal, some of the excitement of being a principal, the fact that we're in a prof profession that people should be passionate about and we want them to be passionate again, the fact that as a principal you have been selected by your district for some talent that you have, for some ex expertise that you have, to bring a school that's struggling and to bring that school to a point where you feel that you're on your way to school improvement. And so we're here to help you through the tough parts. We're here at the beginning when you, uh, like I said, have your arms folded and look at us questioning, questioningly, but we're also there to celebrate at the end when you see some of the progress that you've made. So I appreciate getting to work with you, as do all the other members of CERC. So we look forward to working with you in the future. Thank you very much.